Here's an interview that a lot of y'all might have missed that we want y'all to take a listen to from my boy Eric B. Eric B was the guy that was going to be running the Death Row East. And y'all can hear this conversation between him and John and I. And it should be a good listen to for y'all. We want y'all to take a listen to it. This is Eric B, uh, who is going to be the, the president of Death Row East. And not, not to badmouth him, but I just want to clear up a quote. Um, Snoop said that uh, when Nas and Tupac met in the park, that Tupac said, I got a song dissing you, and when it drops, if you don't have any problem with me, then you won't say anything when the song comes out. To your recollection, I'm not saying, asking you to speak bad on Snoop. I'm just wanting to try to clear it up a little bit because it sounds like that's not fully what happened. Did you hear anything like that, or does that sound like... Um, uh, a little exaggerated, maybe, about the conversation that Nas and, and Tupac had. No, I don't. I don't know where that conversation came. I know that they both had a, you know, a civil conversation, mm -hmm. and they walked away as gentlemen. I don't know I about the, the that, tough and I, and I would hate you, y'all keep asking that. I, I gotta I ask him. You, I was sitting right there. Snoop was not around. He was not right no, there. He wasn't. In that conversation. No, no, no. He wasn't. He, he wasn't there when they because they went to the side and talked. Exactly. Everybody stood down. Okay. Everybody stood down. It was all of us on one side, the Queensbridge guys on the other side, and everybody stood down and let them stand to the side and talk. Okay. So I don't know where you know who got with for this conversation, where that came from. I don't, I don't know where that conversation came from, but I know they stood off to the side talking. Okay. Okay. Um, when Tupac got mad about um, you know Snoop being on the radio, were, were you with Tupac when he heard it? Uh, when he heard the radio uh, interview, or were you not around either one of them at the time? I came, I came back, I came back down, and he, and he was arguing. He was like, he couldn't believe it was something about Snoop said he didn't have a problem, and Tupac said, "Yo, I'm riding for you, and and you're not riding with me." And they got into a little, you know, argument and scrimmage, you know, over that. And you know, but it's like we at the time, you know, we all brothers mm -hmm. and family. Things are going to happen. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I don't want people to look look into it like Snoop and Pac had a beat. Mm -hmm. We we were all brothers. You know, anything could happen at any time. But we we all we're still family. Right. You know what I'm saying? You argue with your brother. You argue with your sister, your cousin. True. You know, yeah. your distant relatives. Mm -hmm. And but you know, we were still family at the end of the day. So I don't want to make it seem like right. they had this big beef. They this big beef, and you know, and it went off from there. You know, they were just mad, exchange words. That's the end of it, and we moved on. Okay. Because it never became an issue, to you know, to my recollection, it never became an issue after that conversation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, when Tupac came to well, not came to you, but when you guys talked and he said, I want to do a song with uh, Melly Mel or Scorpio or Big Daddy Kane, would you reach out to them to get them to go out to L.A. to record, or was that something uh, Pac did yes. on his own? So, yes. So a lot of the One Nation yes. collaborations was directly you helping set those up. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, a lot of them. A lot yeah. of them. Called, called he a lot was, of people. The main called a lot of people. Yeah. Okay. With the different East. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, called, yeah. called to everybody. Yeah. Yeah, I called to everybody and told them to come on down. And, but the, the, the thing, it was everybody thought Tupac had a beef with them. Right. And then you get on the phone, and Tupac and actually would get on the phone himself mm -hmm. and say, hey, man, can you come on down, man? I, yo, I'm looking forward to doing it. And they'd hold the phone like, yo, Eric, y'all, you serious, right? Yeah, man, that's Pac. You talk to him yourself. Right. You know, I think that Tupac is one of the most misunderstood, you know, guys that, that there is. When you, you get around him and you see, you know, who he is, you know, He's one of them guys that's going to ride with you to the end. Mm -hmm. Good, bad, ugly. Good, bad, ugly. He's going to ride with you to the end. Gotcha. Okay. Was there anybody that Pac wanted you to reach out to that you maybe couldn't get a hold of or just scheduling uh, conflicts didn't allow them to work together in time that you could you could shed light on? Just so people get an idea of what One Nation could have been. You know what I mean? No, no. I mean, let me say something. I mean, everybody... Everybody was open to it. I don't think there was not one person that we called or we reached out to that had an issue, but everybody was open to it. Everybody was excited, you know, that we were going to bridge the gaps, you know, with East and West, 
you know, regardless to, you know, what the, what the magazines and stuff were saying. So I, there was not one person that I, Tupac had in, in, you know, in his mental Rolodex that he wanted to use mm. that, that didn't, that didn't pick up the phone and say, yo, come on, let's go. Okay. okay. I mean, it was guys nice and smooth. There was so many different people that, you know, that were ecstatic, you know, about working with them. Yeah. Yeah, like all the boot camp click came out there and did all that stuff. So there's a lot of people. Yeah. Were you um, present for the for the recording sessions of that one? Like, were you that hands on to where you were there during the sessions? Yeah, different sessions. Uh, Big Daddy Kane, I was there for. Okay. Uh, it was. I, I mean, I was there for a whole lot of sessions. And, and the thing about it was, you know, I'm so mad that we didn't like videotape and record the sessions because they were they were pretty hilarious. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. We we did more we did more laughing. We did more laughing and joking than we did recording. Okay. Hey, hey e, let me ask you. Uh, Go ahead. Was it, whose decision was it? Whose decision was it to put uh, Queenie on on uh, the Bonnie and Clyde song, the uh, Me and My Girlfriend song? Uh, that was Tupac's decision. No, just, he was just, sitting there, yeah. and he okay. said, "Hey, he said, hey, I need I need a chick to do this, this, and that." She said, "All right, I'm gonna do it." And huh. he went in and did it. Cool. 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 Uh, how how did uh you and Rakim hook back up? Who was instrumental in making that 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 relationship get back cool? Y'all just reached out well, like man, well, you know what? But you know what, Reg, you know what's so funny about it? It's like what I alluded to earlier. Me and Rakim started as kids. You gotta yeah. remember, we were kids when we started. Nineteen eighty five. Well, nineteen eighty five when I was professional, yeah. Eighty yeah. In eighty six, uh, July seventh, nineteen eighty six. Yeah. So what what happened? What happened is we started out as kids and family. You know, I I go to Rakim's house. He come to my father's house and mother's house. You may allow me, please, with all of them. And we were we are family first and foremost. So a lot of people think that we have a beef. Rakim is my brother. You know what I'm saying? We grew exactly. up as kids together. We started a mom and pop operation and turned it into a corporation. Correct. We're family first and foremost. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You and your brother are going to have a falling out. You and your sister exactly. are going to have a falling out, but you're yeah. still family. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, and then, you know, I was doing so much different stuff. I was doing death row ease. I was, I was uh, managing boxers. I, you know, I was doing TV stuff, movie stuff. And it's in time, has a funny way of slipping past you. Okay. So, you know, you look up, you look up and you say, man, no, you know what? How much time has gone past? And, you know, you, man, let me call my brother up, man. Let, you know, let's sit down and rap, man. Let's do this, 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 and that. Gotcha. So it, it wasn't a, a beef that, you know, let's kill each other, you know, or a relationship that we would just, you know, that, that didn't come together because, because we weren't family, we're family first and foremost. If you see Rakim's brother is on the road with us, Stevie Blast, like last week, somebody came up and they said, "Oh, this is Rakim's brother," and he got upset and he said, "Yo, man, I'm so, I'm so <laughs> sick of this separation between all of us." He said, "Eric's my he said Eric's my little brother too." He said, yeah. "Don't just say that Rakim's my brother. Eric's my brother too, man. What are you talking about?" He said, "Yo, I ride with Eric every day." He said, yo, because, you know, Stevie Blast would tell him, yo, Eric got a bunch of sneakers and shoes, and I go in Eric's room and take them all out and put them on my feet, and all Eric do is laugh. He said, Eric's, he said, Eric's my brother. So, you know, a lot of people try to get in between, you know, your relationships and make what they want to make out of it and run. But, you know, to, to get back to, to what you were asking, we're brothers first and foremost. Before yeah. the music, before, before, before we had kids, you know what I'm saying, and and all the you know all the accolades and stuff. We were, we were family first and foremost, and we were kids, you know, trying to figure this business out. 